In this video, we will create this custom bottom navigation bar with these animated icons and this home screen UI from scratch. In the previous video, we have already created this onboarding UI and the sign-in model. So if you want to learn how we did that, do check out the previous video. But since these two modules are separate and not connected for now, even if you don't watch the first part, you should be good to go. Lastly, as also mentioned in the last video, this app is inspired from this original free SwiftUI plus Rive course by Design Code. So if you want to learn to create the same app in SwiftUI and also how to create your own Rive animations, I would highly recommend you to check out this course. It is completely free and link will be in the description. So let's create a file for custom tab bar inside navigation folder. Here first we have to create a stateful widget and give it a class name custom tab bar. And for now, we're just going to show a text that says I am tab bar. Now before we move further with the design, let's put our tab bar where it needs to be. So I'm going to create a new file, home.dart. And this one will, by end of this course, will contain all the main UI like sidebar, home view, onboarding, etc. But for now, we're just going to add a bottom tab bar. Now let's add a stateful widget, give it a class name, arrive app home. And currently it has an empty container which we're going to replace with the scaffold and put the container as the body. To see the tab bar, we're going to use the scaffolds property bottom navigation bar and set our custom tab bar widget as the value. Now that is done, but we need to set this inside main.dart as home so we can see the changes as we design the UI and replace the onboarding view with our Rive app home widget. Now we can see the current tab bar content as it shows at the bottom of the screen. Let's go back to the custom tab bar file and first thing we're going to do is remove the text and add the main container as the safe area. So at least our content renders within an area the user can interact. Now same as we did in case of sign-in model in previous video, we're going to add two containers where first will act as a gradient border for the tab bar and second container will contain the content. Now we will add drive animation widget to render the animated icon by providing a path to the drive asset file and also import the Rive package. Now it is showing, but because the white background not properly visible, so let's add a decoration to the container with a color from our theme.dart file. Next, we will provide some initial style needed for the tab bar like border radius and shadow with same color as background with 30% opacity and blur radius and Y offset of 20. Now this icons Rive file contains multiple different icons and currently it is showing the default icon. So to use the specific icon, we have to specify the state machine name like chat underscore interactivity and the artboard name chat in capital. Now it is showing. Next step is to trigger the animation. So we're going to use on init callback to get the icons reference and create a function for this. Inside this, we'll create a controller variable and initialize this using a state machine controller class by passing the artboard we get from the param and the state machine name and then set that controller to the artboard. Next, in order to trigger the animation, we need to detect user's click. So we'll wrap this with a Cupertino button and for on press callback, we're gonna create a function on tab press. Next, create a status variable of type SMI bool from right package and set its value inside init function by getting input reference from controller and specify the name of the input, which is active and typecast it to SMI bool. Now inside the button press function, we'll set the status value to true, which will trigger the animation. To reflect the change, I'm going to refresh the app. Now it's going to play in loop until we manually set it to false. So after one second delay, which is the animation time set in the Rive editor, we can set status value to false. Let's refresh. Now it's only going to play once. So we can now successfully animate the icon on click, but currently the icon is too big. So I'm going to wrap Rive widget with a sized box and give it a fixed dimension of 36. And it looks much better now. Let's check the animation, which is also working fine. Now I'm going to set some padding to the button to reduce the default padding. Let's also add some margin to the main container to have some space from the borders, which is going to be 24 horizontally. And 8 for the bottom is just to have minimum space keeping in mind other platforms like Android or web where we don't have the default safe area space. I'm going to add the padding with a value of 1. And since this container is for gradient border, this padding is going to act as a width of the border. Let's add decoration to specify gradient colors using linear gradient class, which is showing error 
because this class is being imported from two different packages, the Flutter one and the Rive package. So it's creating a conflict. But since we don't need it from Rive, we can safely hide this class from the package. Now the gradient colors are white with 50% and 0% opacity, means transparent. Now currently because of the white background, it is not visible but it will after we create other parts of the UI. Lastly, we will provide it some border radius, same as we gave to the second container. Now currently it is only one icon, but we need to show multiple for the tab. And we can specify them all manually, so instead we are going to render them as a list. So I am going to create a new file, tab underscore item dot dart inside the folder models. We will specify the icons list with the required details. First create a class tab item. Then add few properties like ID, state machine and artboard. Now lastly, we are going to add status to play the animation. As the one defined in the custom tab bar class can only store reference for one of the icons, but we need reference for all the icons. So it's better if it's stored in the array with other icon details. Now we'll create an array tab items list. And first item is going to be the chat icon we're currently showing. And specify the correct state machine and artboard name. Now I'm going to repeat the same for other icons. Let's go back to the custom tab bar class and define the icons array. Now to render it as a list, I'm going to wrap the button with a row and pass the list as children, which will render the icon five times. Now let's add a spacing between them. Now currently all these icons are same, so we'll get it based on the index and set the state machine and artboard dynamically. Now if we save, it's going to give us an error. And that is because we also have to set the state machine dynamically in the init function. So for that, I'm going to add a new param index on both init and on press function. And let's update the function call to pass the index value. Now inside init function, change the state machine to get it from the array. Now let's refresh and icons are updated now. But if you see, when I click any icon, it is only animating the last one. And that is because we are using a single variable to store the input reference. So it always ends up with a reference to the last rendered icon. You can change that by also using a status property from icon array based on the icon index. And we update it everywhere it is used. Now let's save. And to see the changes, we have to refresh. Now as you can see, the animation is only playing on the icon we click. Lastly, we can safely delete the local status variable. Now next, when we click on a tab, we need some way to show that it is active. So we need to store the current active tab in a state. So let's create a new state, underscore selected tab, the default value of zero, means the first tab item. Now on tab press callback, we are going to update the state and set its value to the index. Now that we always know which tab is active, so to indicate it to the user, first we are going to add an animated opacity to fade the inactive tabs and give this animation duration of 200 milliseconds. And opacity for active tab is going to be 1 as 50%, that means a little faded. Now only the tab that is active is highlighted. Next, we also need to show some indicator on the active tab. So first we're going to wrap this with a stack. Next we're going to add a container and give it a fixed width and height. Now let's add some style with background color of accent color from our theme.dart file and a border radius of 2. Next add a position widget and we'll give it a top value of minus 4 to shift it a little above the icon. Now it's not showing anymore and that is because it is getting clipped by the stack widget. So we can avoid that by adding a clip behavior of none. Now let's also align it to the center. Now currently it is showing for all the tabs. So we're going to use animated container instead of container so that we can animate the width and also hide it for the inactive tabs. Next add animation duration of 200 millisecond and update the width property to be 0 for inactive tabs and 20 for the active ones. Now as we are using animated container, whatever property we change is automatically going to be animated with the duration that we provide. Now our tab bar is almost done. But just to make sure that it's completely clickable, let's add a background color to the button. And as you can see, there are some area between the tabs that are not clickable. 
So to fix that, we can wrap the button with an expanded widget and optionally provided a key property that we defined in the tabs list. Now this will expand the button and fill the empty space, which would also increase the clickable area. Now another thing is if you see, if we click outside the border radius area on the tab bar, it is detecting the touch. Now obviously it is only noticeable because we are using a mouse, but on a real device when using a finger as a touch, it wouldn't make much difference. But still, if you want to avoid this, we can add a clip behavior of value hard edge on the second container that would limit the touch to within the area of the tab bar. Now since we have made the final improvements, we can safely remove the color from the buttons. And lastly, let's also add a validation on button click so that it doesn't animate the click on already selected tab. Now our bottom tab bar is completed, but we also need to show the active tab screen. So I'm going to create a new home tab view file inside navigation folder. First, create a stateful widget and give it a class name home tab view. Now, before we continue with the design, first let's include it inside home so that we can see the changes. So here, we can pass the new home tab view widget as a scaffold part. Now, inside the home tab file, we're going to pass single child scroll view as scaffold body to make the content scrollable. The column as a child to vertically align the content. First, add the title, and currently, as it is showing behind safe area, so we can pass top padding to the scroll view with the value of media query or padding top, which is going to be equal to the safe area value, and that will show the content below the safe area. Next, add font size of 34 and family of purpose. And finally, we will add some horizontal padding to the title. And below this, we can show horizontal list, and before the design, we need the list data. So we're going to create a new file, courses.dart inside models folder to provide some dummy data for the list. Here, first create a class named course model with an empty constructor and now declare some property for the list, like ID, title, caption, image, subtitle, and color. Lastly, declare them inside the constructor with default values. Now, let's create the double list, course, and provide some data for the first title. Title, subtitle, caption, color, and image. Now I'm going to repeat the same for the other items. Now go back to the home tab view and declare the list. You can also use it directly if you want. And now that we have the data, before we use the list, we'll first design the UI for one of the items and then after that convert that into a list. So I'm going to create a new folder of components and create a new file vcard.dart. I'll create a stateful widget and give it a class name vcard. Now as we are designing it based on the list items, so we need to accept a param course of type course model that we recently created and declare this inside the constructor as the required field. I import and render this inside home tab file and for now we are just going to use the third item as that one has much bigger text content. Now inside vcard, add column as the container child, add title with font size 24 and family purpose. Next, subtitle with font size 15. And as this is a bigger text, we're going to limit this to two lines, add soft wrap to false and add text overflow style to ellipses. Next, add a spacing between these two. And by default, text is centered, so we'll add an alignment of start to the column. And right now, it is looking more like part of the screen UI rather than a list item. So let's add some style to the container. Padding 30 and gradient background color. First color will be one defined in the dummy list, and the second will be the same but with 50% opacity. And also change the gradient begin and end position to top left and bottom right. Lastly, add border radius of 30, and now we will change the text color to be white. Now add a spacing below and include the caption text uppercase with the font size of 30, the family of enter, weight 600, and color white. Now we need some avatar list below, so I'll create an array of avatar with file index count and we will use the last three of these. And after the caption, we'll use wrap widget and pass the avatar list as children array, which will return the image with path to the files. And file count set dynamically based on the index. Next, provide the fixed dimension of 44 and the spacing of 8. And to circle the images, we will wrap it with clip r wrapped widget and give border radius of 22, which is half of the image size. And optionally, we can also pass an ID to the widget. 
Now every avatar should cover a little of the previous one, one after the other. So we'll wrap this with the transform and give it an x offset of index multiplied by minus 20. Minus 20 being the amount, it will shift to the left. So for first avatar, it will be 0, for second minus 20, for third minus 40, and so on. Which will then render the avatars list like this. Now even though these avatars will be same for all the list items, we can at least add some randomness for the list. So it can be in a different sequence for every item. For that, we'll shuffle the array in any callback. Now if you refresh, you can see the sequence is different every time. Now instead of having it cover the whole screen width, we can provide constant to the main container with max width of 260 and max height of 310. Next, add the spacer before the avatar list to align it to the bottom. Now we need to add the course topic image at the top right corner, so we'll wrap the content with the stack and add the image in a position digit and align it to the right. And set the right value to minus 10 to shift a little more. And same for the top. And now it's getting clipped, so we'll add a good behavior of none to the stack. But now it's blocking our title. So we'll wrap it with the container and provide a max width of let's say 170. Lastly, add some shadow to the container with the same color as the background with 30% opacity, blur radius of 8 and offset y of 12. Add another shadow with the same color and blur radius of 2 and offset y of 1. Now the UI is complete, so we can render the whole list. Inside home tab view, replace the item with single child score view and give it the scroll direction of horizontal. Pass the row as child and inside this we will loop through the course array and return the vcard widget that we created. But passing the proper index item this time. Lastly, we will use the toList function of array to convert and render it as a list. Now it's looking fine and as you can see if you refresh the avatar list is also randomized. But we need some final styling so we will add padding around the card of 10. And we can also optionally pass an ID to the list item. And add some padding to the scroll view container. 10 for all direction but extra 20 for the bottom so that it doesn't cut the item shut. Now currently as usual it is by default centered so we'll add the start alignment to the column. Next is to add the second vertical list. So let's first add the title for that. Recent, font size 20, family poppins and add some padding around 20 horizontally and same at the bottom for some spacing from the list. Now same as we did earlier, we'll create a dummy list, provide the properties for them, title, caption, color, image and it won't have a subtitle. Now I'll repeat the same for the three and go back to the home tab and declare the array. Now again before rendering the list, we will first create the UI for one of the items and convert that into a list later on. So I'll create a similar file, hscar.dart. We'll create a status widget, as it's mainly going to be just UI with no states, and give it a class name hscar. Next, we will accept a param name as section with the item data and declare inside the constructor as the required field. Go back to the home tab view and import it. And for now, we we'll render with one of the list items as well. For the UI, we'll use row and add column as its child. Add the title with font size 24 and family purpose. I'll give the container some style. So I'll add a color from the data and some padding around. 30 horizontal and 20 vertical. Lastly, provide a radius of 30. And change the text color to be white. Now add the caption with font size 17, family inter and color white. And add some spacing. Next, after the column, add a topic image, but to align it to the end, we we'll wrap the column containing title and subtitle with an extended widget and align the content to the start. Next, we'll add maximum height of 110 to main container. Now we'll add a vertical divider before the image with some padding to reduce the height and it has some default width so we'll set it to zero. Lastly, set man axis size on the column to the minimum so that it gets aligned to the center. Now this is done, so go back to the home tab and same as earlier, convert it into a list. We need to add spread operator before the list as we rendered it inside an array. 
I will return the edge card on the list. For some final styling, we will add some padding, 20 horizontal and same at the bottom, except the top as that is already added to the title. Now we can optionally add a key to the list title. Now as you can see, the bottom tab area is blocking our screen content with some white background. So we can avoid that by adding a property at stand body to the home scaffold. But now the screen content should be able to scroll till above the bottom tab. So for that, we can add same as we did for the top is safe area, a bottom padding for media query. And as we are using bottom navigation bar property of the scaffold, it is also going to consider the tape area in the padding value. Now lastly, we can also add a background from our theme or dart file on the scaffold. Almost done, but we also need to change the screen as we click on the tab. So let's go back to the home or dart file. But first thing we need here is some callback to let us know that the user has changed the tab. And that we can get inside the custom tab bar file by creating a callback on tab change and declare as required in the constructor. Now call the function in the local on tab press function with index. Now go back to the home and add the callback in the declaration. Next we will create a state and that will store the current screen with the default value of container with a theme color as the background. Now this is just going to be a basic logic with an area of the screen and we will update the tab body state based on the tab index clicked. And for home we have this screen but for others we are just going to show the tab title. So first screen is home tab view and for this I am going to create a common function that will return the title text with some basic style and declare them in the array by passing the tab name in the parent. Now let's set the default value of the tab body in init state callback as the first item. Now update the scaffold's body with our state variable. And lastly set the state inside the tab change callback. Now as you can see it is updating just fine. Now second module for this application is also completed and for the final one we will create this custom animated sidebar from scratch and put all the modules together to complete the application. So be sure to stick around and I will see you in the next one.